Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Yesterday I received an email from someone asking me that if in Lightroom you could apply a linear gradient so that it only affects the middle part of the gradient. Well, the answer is no, but there is a trick you could do to make the gradient operate the way you want it to. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how to do it. Now we're going to work on this image. It's an unedited RAW file, so I'm going to quickly do an edit on it. I'm going to go to the crop tool and straighten it very quickly. It's just a little bit crooked. And I'm going to the, go to the basic tab and you'll notice that the image is underexposed. And if you've purchased any of my courses on Lightroom or even saw some of my YouTube videos where I demonstrate how I edit images that are either underexposed or overexposed, you know that when I have an underexposed image, I'll immediately go to the highlight slider and pull it all the way down. Then I'll go to the shadow slider and push it all the way up. Then, because this image is underexposed, I'll go to the exposure slider and move it to the right. If, on the other hand, this image was overexposed, I would still move the highlights and shadows slider in the exact same way. I just take the exposure slider instead of to the right, I take it to the left. So then I move this exposure slider so till it looks like I have proper exposure, which is right about there. Next, I'll get a white and black point. On my Mac, I hold in the Option key. On the PC, you hold in the Alt key. I'll click on the white slider, and you can see there's a little color coming through in that kind of lower left-hand area. Move it to the right and you can see more is coming through. That means I'm clipping the highlights there. I don't like to clip the highlights at all. So I'll pull that down until most, if not all, of that color dissipates right about there. And for me, that's a perfect white point. Same thing for black. So I'll hold in that Alt Option key, click on the black slider. This time I get an entirely white screen. I'll move this to the left till I see color coming through. It means I'm crushing the shadows in those areas. I don't mind crushing the shadows a little bit. So I have did an edit very quickly. Now let's just say that I want to do an edit to the trees. There's trees that are in the midground and the trees that are back here on those hills. Now there really isn't a mask that allows you to like grab the midground or anything like that. So you might be thinking, well, let's try a linear gradient. So we'll open up masking. We'll grab the linear gradient tool and we'll click like right around the middle here, like right around here and draw down. Now I want it to be perfectly horizontal. So I'll hold in the shift key while I do that and it will force it to be perfectly horizontal but you'll notice the way the gradient works is it's at full strength at the top and then it gradually decreases as it moves down so if i did do an adjustment it's really not affecting those midtones or the midtones i'm sorry it's not affecting the midground it's affecting from the midground to the background and i don't want it to do that so what can we do well i'll show you let me get rid of this for a minute let me just give you another tip uh, when adding a uh, linear gradient. When you click on that linear gradient to add it, you'll notice when I clicked and dragged, there's three lines. And the top line stays stationary as I pull down, and the other two lines move away from each other and move away from that top line. If you want to apply this gradient so that it just affects the middle part of the image, what I suggest you do instead is hold in the option key on your uh, Mac or Alt Canna PC. And you'll notice that when you draw it out, that middle line stays stationary and the top line and bottom line move away from it. This, in my opinion, will allow you to more, per more precisely put the gradient where you want it, right in the middle, in this case, of the image. Also, you could hold in the shift key with it as well and it will force it to be perfectly horizontal. So with that said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, delete all these masks and we're going to go to that linear gradient. I want it on these trees. So I'm going to probably put my cursor right about there, hold in the shift so I keep it perfectly horizontal and hold in the option key so that I'm drawing out from the middle and we'll pull down like this. Now you'll notice it still has, I'm going to move it over a little bit. You'll notice that the overlay though is still on the sky. And if I did do an adjustment, it's still affecting the sky. So I really haven't achieved what I want to achieve yet. So to do what I want to do, have it only affect the trees in the middle, what I need to do is intersect this gradient with another gradient. So click on the three dots, go to Intersect Mask With, go over to Linear Gradient, and instead of drawing down, we're going to push this gradient up. And again, I'm going to hold in the Shift and Option keys when I do it and then push up. Now you'll notice that the red overlay is only in this middle part of the image. 
It's not on the bottom, it's not on the top. And if I do an adjustment, you could see that it's only affecting that middle part of the image. And of course, you could come back in here and adjust things. You want it to intersect a little more down here. Come over here, pull this one down this way. And you could see now it's affecting the middle part of the image. It's not affecting the sky as much. A little bit of the sky here, but I could adjust things. It's not affecting the grass in the foreground, or it's not affecting the sculpture of mushrooms or anything like that. It's just affecting the trees where I want it to affect. And what do I want to do? Well, I don't know. Maybe we'll come in here and we'll add some clarity and some contrast. Maybe we'll go to tone and we'll open up the shadows. Though it doesn't do too much. Maybe remove some contrast. And uh, maybe then we'll go to point color. And I'll grab the eyedropper and I'll go to the brighter greens and I want to make those even brighter. Maybe add some saturation. Then we'll grab that eyedropper again and we'll go to some darker greens. If I could find some that I want to click on, right about there maybe. And with those, we'll make those a little more saturated and maybe those a little darker. So you could see that I intersected two linear gradients. One I drew down and the other one I drew up. And the point of intersection is only going to be the area where the adjustments will occur, which happens to be where I put it on these trees. Now, you're probably thinking, well, that's a lot of work. There's probably a better way, right? Well, for this case, yeah. I mean, I'm going to delete those masks. Um, I probably wouldn't do that for here. What I would do if I really wanted to do something to those trees in the middle part of the image, I would just grab a brush. I would probably have auto mask on so that it will tend to only draw where I click. So what it does when you have auto mask on is wherever you click, it looks at the little plus sign in the middle of the brush and it will only apply the brush stroke to similar tone, texture, and color. So it will tend to then not bleed over, let's say, into the sky. So I'll come in here like this and try to get the trees and it's still not perfect. And the linear gradient, those weren't perfect either. But I could come in here and get the trees that way. And then I could do a similar uh, adjustment as well. I could maybe open up everything there. Maybe we'll just go to color and we'll add some saturation. And then we'll go to effects and we'll add some clarity and some texture. So that's another way to do it. Um, in some instances, the brush probably would be a better alternative. But maybe there is a situation where the brush just isn't working and you could intersect those two linear gradients and uh, achieve what you want to achieve. So uh, that's it. I do want to mention very quickly that I have two full courses on Lightroom. One is on Lightroom Classic and the other one is in light on Lightroom CC. In the description below this video, I'll have a link to my website. You can check them out and I'll have discount codes for them so you could save a few bucks if you want to learn how to use Lightroom. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.